hello everyone and welcome back to another video and welcome back to the channel and today we are going to be doing a challenge from dev challenges io uh, the website was updated so you can view the legacy if you want by going right to the legacy or you can click on the new version if you want to land on the new version which is this one and it does look pretty pretty nice and so if you're not logged in then it's going to require you to log in but i'm already logged in so i can go into my dashboard right there and then when i go into dashboard obviously it takes me here i have not completed any challenges yet but i have started one and that is the one that we're going to attempt in this video so if you go into challenges i'm going to start with the responsive web developer so just click on this and then i am going to start with the the minimal blog card right here so just click on this and then it's going to say obviously it says continue challenge because i already downloaded the files for this but i deleted them i accidentally deleted them so let me see if i can download them again and so let's see we can download it here or responsive web starter i mean we don't we can just create a new file really and so the way this works is if you take a look at this let me zoom out a bit so this is the design that we're going to be building and then we can take a look at the pages so the pages that you have is only this one we can download the files we can download the this image which i'm actually going to do so download and so i'm going to download it into my downloads folder and then the way this ui works is you can actually take a look at the grid if you want if you want to take a look at how this is built but i'm not going to do that and then we can take a look at the fonts that were used so the font is called sora and we're going to grab this so let me just go ahead and uh, let me open this up it's going to open up in google fonts and then we can also take a look at the colors that are used so this is going to be useful to us and then finally this is the content so this is the heading and then this is the text and then this is the name of this person so that is going to be very useful so that we don't have to type everything out every single time and then if you want to take a look at the mobile design then you can just click on this tab right here i mean there we go so it was still loading in so this is the mobile design and then this is the desktop design it doesn't really change all that much and then if you click right here on the right then we get access to the user stories so basically what is going to be required for uh, in order to successfully complete this project uh, kind of like a checkbook or, or something so what i'm going to do is this i'm going to open up my terminal and then inside my terminal i want to create a new directory so i'm going to cd into my desktop once this loads in there we go and then inside my desktop i'm going to say make a directory so a folder that is called dev challenges and then i'm going to cd into dev challenges and then inside here i want to create a new folder and this folder is going to be called uh what what is the the title it's called minimal blog card so minimal dash blog dash card and then what i'm going to do is if i take a look at what's inside here it's only that one folder so i'm going to say open up visual studio code into minimal dash blog dash card as we begin please subscribe to the channel if you're not already and ring the notification bell so that you're always going to be notified of when i upload a new video and so there we go now you can see that it is basically empty so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file so I'll create a new file inside here called index.html for our html and then another new file called index.css for our styling now before we continue i also want to create a new folder called images and images is only going to have one folder we can close our terminal even though images is only going to have this one single file so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and grab uh, which one was it this one extract it and then i just want to go ahead and copy this image so let me say copy and then inside my desk desktop i want to go inside dev challenges inside here and then inside my images and paste it in so that we now have our image and then as we do that let's also go into google fonts let's go ahead and grab this font so we need the the regular font so regular 400 and then let me let me see let me see 
so regular 400 and maybe like the semi bold or or the bold so let me go ahead and grab the semi bold i think it's better and then using the import tab right here let's go ahead and copy this part so copy and then let's navigate back into vs code and then inside our css we're just going to paste this on the top and then let's declare our universal selector and say that let the font family be sora with the fallback of sans serif i think the fallback is sans serif let me see yeah the fallback is sans serif and then let's also go ahead and declare the css box model so reset the padding to zero reset the margin to zero and set the box sizing to border box and then let's see the body is going to have a background color let me close this tab now i mean does the body have a background color let's just take a look i mean i can't really tell i can't really tell but let me use my color picker extension here let's see is, is it just white no it's not white it's like almost white but it is fb fa and f8 for the hashtag so let me say that the background color here is going to be hashtag this and then let's just go ahead and save that and then now inside our index html i am using an extension called emmet which comes pre-installed with visual studio code so i'm going to say exclamation and enter and it is going to generate this for me now i want to change the title into minimal blog card and then above this i'm going to link my index.css and then inside the body i want to go ahead and create a div with a class of container now the div with the class of container is going to be our actual div inside here so basically this card now the way it looks on mobile is just basically almost the same thing only on a smaller screen right and let's zoom out a bit and then let me reset this back to 100 percent there we go so we can see that we have this okay so let's go ahead and do this inside this let's create an article and then inside this article we're going to place our image which comes from dot slash images for slash cactus image and then below this image we're going to have this kind of small thing let me zoom in we're going to have this um, kind of like a tag so the way i'm going to do that is i'm going to place it inside a button and i'm going to say design and then below this button i'm going to create a div so I'm going to create a div and this div is going to house this heading as well as this text as well as the name of the person here and there's a border there's a border here i've just noticed it so let's go ahead and say that let's return an h2 and let me copy the content because it's faster so copy and paste and then below this add a paragraph copy this and paste it and then below this div we're going to add another paragraph with the name of the person here so copy and paste that's looking nice now let's go ahead and save this and then i'm going to be using an extension that is called live server so right here which is going to help me to launch a local development server so i'm going to right click in my index html and just say open with live server and then as that opens up we can just wait a few moments and there we go so we have this as our default design you're looking quite ugly so let me place this to the right and then let's place this to the left so that we can begin to style them side by side now i'm going to go inside the class of container so save this and then let's go inside our css and say that for the class of container we're going to do the following uh first of all i want to get rid of the horizontal scrolling here and it is because of this image so right above the body let's say that for the image is going to have a max width of 100 percent which is just going to limit it so that it doesn't cause an overflow it, it is going to limit it inside the container in which it is placed and then inside the body let's go ahead and add a padding of 5 rem on the top and bottom and 1 rem on the left and right just to push this downwards and inwards a bit but we're going to reset these styles when we get to the desktop design because we don't want this padding on the top and bottom on the desktop only on the mobile so that we can have a bit of scrolling just in case you have a small horizontal screen or rather vertical screen not horizontal now let's go inside the container let's give it a background color background dash color of hashtag white let's give it a padding all round of one rem let's give it a border radius border radius of one rem as well so that we're going to have that let's give it a box shadow shadow 
of let's say about 10 pixels on the horizontal 10 pixels in the vertical and 10 pixels for the blur radius and then let's give it an rgba value of 0 0 0 and 0 0.15 for the opacity so that we're going to have this light box shadow so that the container is a bit accentuated and then we are going to go inside the dot container container and then let's say that for the button class we're going to have a background color and then actually now let me separate these tabs so that this can be open here so that i can select the colors here so the background color is going to be this one basically but with a slight opacity so i'm going to say hashtag this and then on the end of it i'm going to append about like 25 which is going to reduce the opacity of the background color and then the color for the text is going to be our purple color right there and then i'm going to give it a padding of 0 0.5 rem on the top and bottom and one rem on the left and right then give it a border radius border dash radius of 30 pixels to make it rounded let's see how it looks that looks almost okay and then the font is bold so the font is bold so let's go here let's say font weight let's say bold and then let's remove this outline that it has so let's go below this let's say outline none and let's change the cursor to a pointer when we hover over it i mean because it's a button by default we already have a cursor of pointer uh wait a minute is it not a button i mean it is a button but it, it doesn't have the cursor of pointer oh you know what that is with tailwind css i'm so used to tailwind css okay so we have removed the outline which which appears when we focus on the button so let's also go ahead and remove that border so let me go below this let's say border none which is going to remove that border so that's looking nice for our button and then let's give it a hover state here let's say that when we hover over the button then the background color is going to be hashtag our purple color but then let's increase the opacity to about 75 so let's see yeah we can have that and then let's add a transition here so transition the background color the background color by 0 0.15 seconds and my internet disconnected but it's back and then let's say is in out so that now we have like a slight transition okay that's looking nice so let's go ahead and style the container h2 so the container h2 i think uh, the text is a bit different in color it is this one so let's go ahead and say that the text for the h2 is going to be hashtag this that's looking nice let's give it a margin of let's say how does it look how does it look uh, it seems to have a bit of more margin on the top than on the bottom so let's say margin of one ram on the top zero on the left and right and 0 0.6 to 5 ram on the bottom we can work with that and then let's go ahead and say that for the container paragraph now we want this one how does it look it is lighter font so let's go ahead and grab the font this one so let's say that for the container paragraph the color is going to be hashtag this Okay. and then let's go ahead and give it a line height so line height 1.8 just to separate it out a bit and then let's go inside we need this one so let me give this a custom a custom class name of name just so that i can spell it differently because this is a paragraph and this is a paragraph and when we're using this we are targeting both paragraphs so we don't want to mess up the styles so let's say that for the container paragraph and then the paragraph that has a class of name then we want to give it a margin top of one rem separate it out from that and then let me see how this looks i mean uh it has a a, a padding on uh not a padding sorry but a margin it has not a margin it has a border it has a border on the top this border right here so let's go ahead and add that let me go ahead and say that border dash top and it's going to be a two pixel border and it's going to be solid with a color of hashtag this one let's save it uh that is too dark that is too dark so let me go ahead and get the correct color it should be maybe this one if i'm looking at it correctly let me go ahead and change this let's see yeah that is the correct one and then in order to separate out this border from the text what we need to do is add a padding so i'm going to say padding top of one rem as well just to separate out the border from the from this text 
So that is looking nice. Now let's go back to this part on the button and then add a margin on the top so that it pushes away from our image. So right here, I'm going to say on the button, let's give it a margin desktop one rem. Separate it out just a bit. And then is this image rounded? Yes, it is rounded. So let's go ahead and, and change that. So with the image right here, I mean, we only have one image on the entire thing. So you can just add it here. So border dash radius, change it to one rem. There we go. And then now what we need to do is just scale this up. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to place a max width on the container. So where we have the container, we can just go ahead and say, add a max width here of about 400 pixels. And what that will do is it is going to limit this to 400 pixels. So that way, when, when it exceeds 400 pixels, then it stops growing, as you can see right there. And then now what you need to do is just place it to the center. And we do that by saying margin dash inline of auto meaning margin on the left and right of auto, which means it's going to place it in the center. Now we need to center this uh, vertically as well. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and remove this padding first of all by adding a media query. So I'm going to say at media, and I'm going to say that for a mean width of let's say 500 pixels maybe. Now you know what, let me say, let me say tablet side screens, or rather let me say 640 pixels. That was my voice. So let me go ahead and say that for the body, then we want the padding to be zero. So basically remove the padding on the top and the bottom, and then the padding on the left and right that we had, because now the screen is wide enough to accommodate this without it touching the edges. And then now we want to bring this to the center. So the way you do that is by using Flexbox, or you can use Grid by the way, but I just prefer to use Flexbox, so I can say Display Flex, and then Align Item Center and just for contact to the center. But that changes nothing because we now need to add a height so I can add a height of 100 viewport heights here, and it is now centered on all screens. As you can see, I'm zooming out and zooming in, and it is looking nice. So that is the project complete. So now what you need to do is we need to go ahead and create a GitHub repository for this so that we can actually submit it to GitHub and then submit our solution. So right here, I'm going to say open a GitHub here, open GitHub, and then open Netlify as well. So Netlify. And then let's create a new repository. And I'm going to call this new repository. Uh, let me say dev challenges dash minimal dash blog dash star. That is quite a long name, but it works. And then let's go ahead and begin to do this. So let's copy the link to our repository and then open up our terminal using control J. And then let's say this, let's say git init to initialize a new git repository. And then let me say git add images and git commit, let me say add, and then let me say images. Let's say git add index.css and git add index.html and git commit, let's say structure, uh, okay, structure and style component and then git remote add origin and then add in our link and then git branch dash capital m main to change our branch to the main branch and then git push dash u origin main and that is going to push all this to our remote repository now something that you can do here is you can add a readme.md file just so that uh, this part is not empty, let me show you once this reloads so that this part here is not empty. So you can add a readme, you can add a, a few things inside here, uh, which is going to be the description of your repository, and then just push it to the remote repository once again, and then the readme is going to appear here, but I'm not going to do that. So now you can log into Netlify, let's say import an existing project from GitHub, and then let's search for minimal dash log dash card there we go so let's go ahead and select this and then let's say loading loading there we go let's say deploy and then deploying let's change the site configuration here let's change the name let me say psb server let me say minimal dash blog dash card 
and there we go so let's go ahead and take a look and we have that so that is our block card looking quite nice now let's go ahead and submit it so back inside here let me go where's the um the thingy challenges responsible developer here where's the submit how do you submit this how do you submit this uh wait a minute is it continue challenge oh here we go <laughs> submit so minimum block card okay yeah that's that, that that looks okay so demo url did i copy it nope your repository url is this one uh okay with the demo url the demo url is here copy paste it here the description we don't need to have a description unless it is required but you can say save and continue okay let me just copy the title oops no come on okay demo url is here repository url is here and let me copy this paste it here let's say save and continue 50 characters long really in vanilla html html really and css seven continue uh you have to continue and then let's just let it load a bit as it submits okay so there we go so it says what to submit solution it's only 50 percent or more what really i mean how did they do so this is our solution and then this is the design so our solution is just a bit bigger but you know it works i mean it works so submit solution and submitting and then now we have to wait again and there we go looking nice 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 why does it look all blurry and stuff it looks quite blurry anyway so there we go so we have completed the first project and i don't know if i have it in me but we can go ahead and create another project right away but obviously it's going to be a separate video so thank you for watching and if you enjoyed it then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already and i will see you in the next video bye bye